up guys hear me well I kind of adjusted the microphone uh, again hopefully this is better sweet Opa. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, this is, excuse me, a damn fine cup of coffee. What's up, what's up guys, and gals, so for tonight, we're going to continue what I started yesterday, um, and again, just to, for a quick recap, if you guys haven't seen the video, you can go back, basically this is a different type of exercise where I try to capture the gesture just using very primitive shapes like boxes I'm gonna let and stuff you in like on that. Secret. Kind of based on some exercise that I've done with drawing and from the live model. So yesterday was pretty interesting because it was the first time that I actually tried approaching it this way. So and I also started with the legs, which I usually don't do. Um, I usually. So basically, I was basically trying to put myself out of my comfort zone, right? Uh, 
But today we're gonna be working on the torso, the arms, uh, possibly the head. So definitely the the, the part that I like sculpting the most. The torso. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll tone that down a little bit. Is it is it better? Let me know if the. Oh, I know why. One second. Yeah. Is it better now? Let me know if it's better now, because I kept clicking. Uh, sweet, sweet. Right on, right on. So, yeah. I mean, not much to say other than that, so let's just get going. If you guys have any questions or anything, just let me know. Uh, super excited to continue to work on this piece. And I'll probably do what I did yesterday. I'm gonna sculpt a little bit, try to explain my thought process, and then and then pause and kind of talk to you guys and see if you guys have any questions or or any comments or anything. Uh, so please feel free to just ask whatever you guys want, and then we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be reviewing those. I mean, I say we, but it's just me. <laughs> so I will be reviewing those uh, in a little bit. Uh, but I definitely want to stimulate. Like yesterday, there was a bunch of people talking uh, themselves, right? Like, so you, you guys feel free to use this space to chat and to talk and to ask questions to yourselves. And this is like definitely an, uh, an open arena. So you can just say whatever you want, uh, make new friends whatnot uh, uh, I actually tried doing that with my discord channel uh, that was the whole reason why I created the discord channel uh, ended up growing to a significant number uh, but I don't know like the whole discord thing it doesn't seem to really allow the iteration the interaction not iteration the interaction that I was kind of hoping for but yeah, hopefully this helps. And again, keeping everything simple, uh, really trying to use this exercise as an exercise. So not too much concern about getting things perfect. Uh, but at the same time, I want to make sure I'm taking the most out of this. really trying to, to see if I can actually capture everything that I see on my reference. Hey Daniel, I'll go back. I'll, I'll come back to your question on the mistakes by junior character artists uh, in a little bit because I need to elaborate on that. Uh, but just just want to say hi to everybody. Um, hi Mars, Brian, Nico. Uh, 
So I actually just stopped working maybe like 20 minutes ago, so I ended up missing Raph's presentation, but I'll definitely watch it later. Hi Emily, Callum, Daniel, uh, Samuel, Ernest, what's up, what's up, what's up everybody, good to see you, good to see you guys here. Alright, so yeah, uh, Daniel just remind me later but I'll, I'll come back to your question it's definitely a really good question what's up Matthew uh, cheers brother what's up CMAC damn look like the whole crew is here what's up Felipe uh, what's up what's up what's up yeah I'll, I'll watch it later all right, so prepared for a power outage if strong winds, hot weather, and oh low man, this advertising risk. PGE may need to turn off electricity for public I need safety. To, I, I need to find a to prepare by making an emergency. Well, whatever, plan, building let an me just supply pause this. Sorry about the ad. I need to find a free music for streaming without advertisement. So, if you guys know any. Uh, just let me know. Yesterday I was watching a. We sculpted uh, while listening to a YouTube playlist, where was was which was supposed to be copyright free, but I ended up getting a notification on YouTube saying that my um, uh, my video got not banned, but it's like a strike or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Maybe I should just subscribe to <laughs> Spotify or something. It's still playing the the advertisement. I think it's like five minutes or of ads or something like that. Um, and hopefully my voice is is clear enough. I cannot talk too loud because my kid is sleeping on on the next door, so. You know, just bear with me. All right, we're back with some music. Actually, what we can do is every time the ads play, I can pause. And while the ads are muted, we can just talk and we can um, maybe answer some questions and stuff. So that's, that's a good idea. All right, so let's just get going with this. What's up, Hedgefield, Redfield, Max Dale. Yeah, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your guys' names correct. Uh, if not, my bad. But... All right, so I'm gonna isolate the head, keep the head for later. Um, actually, same thing for the hands. And then this little guy here, I'm gonna just dynamesh. So we can start sculpting and having some fun. Um, I think what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna try to connect the dots here. So, you know, imagining that the abs are connecting to the Iliac crest. Um, You know, this is not how I usually sculpt. Again, I'm just trying to make this uh, challenging and fun and uh, spicy, if you will. Maybe for me, maybe not for you guys. <laughs> but at least for me, like, you know, like breaking the habit really makes a huge difference. Uh, it also makes things more interesting after you've done those, uh, like a lot of times. Yeah, I can already tell that this is a little bit too long, so we're gonna fix that later. Uh, I wanna make sure I'm getting the pinch here. And also gonna be adjusting uh, the hips. Like I said yesterday, it's very hard to 
do the whole connection of the hips with the with the torso without having the torso. I'm gonna take some like very basic measurements. Yeah, this is definitely too long, so we're just gonna make this a little bit smaller. And the reason why I can um, just kind of scale everything down this way is just because uh, I don't have anything locked at this point, right? So I, I really don't care. So actually this, we should try to, so in my reference, Unfortunately, I cannot show you guys because of copyright and like I said the other day, I just want to be mindful with the with the models and uh, You know like be respectful, but My model maybe so you know what maybe what we can do it's actually Find a model and then maybe we can do some live sculpting as if we were uh, doing like a live drawing session if you guys know any models or anyone doing that kind of stuff, just let me know. That, that could be interesting and then we can actually uh, do a whole session, uh, a bunch of people together. That would be cool. Alright, so but then my model it really has an arch here which I'm kind of slowly capturing and then this shoulder is a little bit higher, so really emphasizing the contraposto here uh, and I want to make sure I'm catch capturing these forms and like I said yesterday I'm not really trying to uh, I'm, I'm kind of trying to ignore the anatomy in a way uh, this is like a new workflow for me but I'm really trying to focus on the big silhouettes first and then I'm gonna construct the forms on top of those shapes so I want to make sure I'm actually capturing the the essence, the pose, the the dynamism, the dynamic, or uh, you know, you know what I'm saying. So maybe you don't, <laughs> but you you will eventually know what I'm trying to say, or maybe not, or maybe you will. I don't know. Uh, cool. So we do have this pinching here, uh, and of course I'm not ignoring ignoring per se right what i'm trying to say is that i'm not really trying to construct the rib cage right now i'm just trying going for the big masses and big shapes big uh attitude and then i will construct it later but of course this is pinching uh, because you have the obliques connecting here and then you have the rib cage right so you have the opening of the rib cage here but trying to kind of not spend too much time on that and then also looking at the negative shapes so I just see this little guy here and maybe it should be a little bit lower. Okay, and then let's make sure we are rounding this a little bit too because from the side I'm able to see both shoulders and, and the position of the arms. It's not correct by any means but not, not too far as well. much more comfortable with sculpting the torso than the rest of the body just because that's the, that's that's the my favorite part to model and to sculpt but still I want to follow the principles that I've 
or the rules that I set myself in the beginning, which is try to stick to the gesture first. And then this is kind of overlapping here. Uh, and then we're gonna understand why later, but let's try to capture that. And you have another overlap here. Maybe the obliques are flaring out or whatever. Uh, let's make sure we are capturing this curve. So you have the rib cage going this way. Okay. All right, good. So we're gonna start blending these two assets. Uh, the, uh, the crest and kind of here. something like that and then we can work on, on the definition a little bit later but Almost align with mm. God damn, Jimmy. This some serious going made shit. Me and Vincent would have been satisfied with some freeze dried tasting joints, right? <laughs> Need spring this serious going made shit on. What flavor is this? There's a really nice angle from the back here that I really, really want to make sure I'm catch, capturing this one. Uh, this is a, yeah, definitely not an easy pose. I may need to start connecting this because otherwise it's going to be very hard to uh, really find these bows. And again, uh, I really want, like, my instinct tells me to just kind of build the rib cage and find the anatomy, but for the sake of the exercise, uh, really trying to kind of avoid doing that a little bit more because I don't want to lose the gesture like once you start constructing the thing uh, you usually lose a lot of action and so things tend to look a little bit stiffer at least for me but I, I 
think I should just merge these two things. It's gonna be very hard. So I'm gonna duplicate the legs. I'm gonna duplicate this torso. Uh, just yeah, just for the sake of having a copy. Uh, I'm gonna merge these two. Are you prepared and then for we're going to DynaMesh everything winds, hot weather, and, low humidity uh, and just because it's a little bit easier to work with to turn off electricity for public safety we are working to make power shut off shorter uh, and more targeted we ask our customers to prepare by making just because it's a little bit plan, easier to work with an emergency supply kit um, and check proper that topology backup power sources are safe to operate so we mesh the whole thing alerts, and i guess it's time for some q and a all right all right hopefully this makes sense all right so let's go back all right so daniel what mistakes do i find to be the most common by a junior character artist well um that, that this this question can be answered in many different ways but what i i typically like to say to uh to beginners or junior artists or interns and you know uh, maybe this is your first job right uh, i like to say just relax um I know we like to compare ourselves to the seniors in the company and to you know like to the peers that are that have been doing this for a much longer time than yourself um and then so it, don't 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 do that in the professional environment in a way uh, of course you need to compare and you need to get better you need to improve but just remember that you got hired and you are expected to to work as a junior artist, right? So you, we don't expect senior quality assets from a junior artist, right? Uh, and of course you should strive for that and you should aim for that, right? But the whole goal is that uh, a mid-level artist is expected to deliver mid-level quality art. And, and and same with like the whole soft skills and every, everything else that kind of entails the, the job, right? But just relax, take your time and, and do the best that you can and you will grow um, in no time. Uh, the other thing is that listen to the peers, um, listen to your art director, listen to your lead. There is so much you can learn just by listening and just not being uh, humble enough. You can lose all of the opportunities to grow. So, you know, be humble, really listen to what they're saying, try to learn, like, try to uh, do your research, do your homework. That, that, that's all I can say. Uh, so the common mistakes would be not listening or being naive enough, thinking that you are better than you actually are, or even get frustrated because you believe you are on a different level than you actually are, or you know, like trying to deliver things or even trying to attempt things that are a little bit beyond your skill set at the moment. Um, you know, ju just take it easy um, and just keep pushing. All right, so if I finish The Fisherman, no, I actually stopped. Uh, I, may, I, may, I may work on it more, but we'll see. All right, all right, all right. Why can't we see my whole interface? Well, I thought it would be better for the stream to just kind of focus on and really zoom in into the whole uh, and what I'm doing, like everything else, everything around my interface is just a bunch of but buttons that you can download on my website for free if you are interested on that. So yeah, I think this is this is a little bit more pleasing to the eye. Yeah, this is the, hi Mariana, this is definitely based on the reference. I have a bunch of pictures and photos from a model that I bought and yeah, definitely work out like off of that. I'm an environment artist and now working with action figures, actually enjoying a lot, having the opportunity to learn more. Do you have any tip for someone that is coming from a different field? Uh, yeah, I guess the same, the same, 
the same comments apply here. Uh, the more you learn about different fields, the better you get. Uh, I also like to interact a lot with engineers and uh, animators and, and whatnot. So I, I do like to take that opportunity to to uh, to learn more about the craft, about the, the game industry in general. Uh, and of course, environment artists as well. We are very close. We are modeling. We are uh, texturing. We are doing UVs. We are doing kind of kind of the same things right like although one is a little bit more related to the environment the other one is a little bit more related to the characters we are still part of the same art group we are still uh, performing the same type of tasks so I, I think th those two blend a lot um, smash that like guys <laughs> thanks CMAC oh my god uh, All right, so what did I learn from Elia? Well, Elia taught me a lot and and he really introduced me to to different techniques and especially coming from the Russian Academy uh, background that he studied and you guys can follow his work if you haven't if you don't do, but he's just an amazing artist but more than that an amazing teacher so has a really nice way of explaining things so i learned that we do have all of these different things when drawing and painting like the picture plane and you have the construction and you have like all of these things that you can you can use it all uh, based on the asset based on the uh, on the complexity of the problem you don't need to really stick to one thing you can basically do everything uh, and just kind of use as 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 different tools. Um, this is the mail. Um, if I have more plans for content on my gun road, yeah, totally. Um, probably not this year, but I I actually have some courses half halfway through. Uh, I also worked more on my anatomy book part two, but I don't have any plans on releasing anything this year. Uh, when it comes for studying anatomy, what do you recommend more? Doing gesture pose or echo shades? I think both. Uh, gestures are great. Echo shades are great, but they have a different purpose. So I would probably just do both. Um, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. All right, guys, I'm going to go back, come back to... Salve pro Brasil aí, Uriel. All right, so let's, let's, let's come back to the... I'm going to divide this a little bit, and then, you know, just project the whole thing. Uh, yeah, I need to turn this on in order to project. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Cool, all right. Cool. So now we have a little bit more freedom to just kind of work on the surface and, and refine things better. I'm going to actually hide the arms because I want to focus on the torso a little bit more. Okay. So first thing that I want to do is really establish the thickness of the whole model which is very off right now so let's start with uh, getting the mass of the rib cage so this is the point that I, I believe I can start to insert a little bit of a uh, structure uh, and can start really start to think about making sense of the forms that we see uh, but still focus on the gesture because that's the, that's the part that I'm really interested in studying. Uh, and whenever you have something like a speedo or something that you have like lines, you can use those lines to guide you, but just be careful to not uh, confusing them with uh, maybe landmarks or some other anatomical structure. 
but they can be used as uh, you know like guidelines or even comparison measurements all right so let's just start adding a little bit more meat to the back so we have the whole uh, rib cage flowing this way and again I'm not sculpting ribs or anything like that but just trying to connect the whole thing going for the big masses first adjusting some of these proportions definitely want to make sure this pinching here is Exactly what's going on in there. And we can do this. We have the pectorals kind of coming flowing this way. prepared for a power outage if strong right, winds I guess hot it's time for and another Q and a high fire risk because of this PG may need to turn off electricity amazing. for public safety we are working to make power shut uh, shorter and more advertisements 
cool. All right, so let me see where I stopped. I felt overwhelmed by how little I knew and how much I needed to learn. That really got me excited to try to learn a lot from my team. That's that's awesome, man. Uh, that's really great to hear. I think we all felt like that at some point. So yeah, that, that's 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 a good good way. All right, hey Glauco, some years ago you made a mentorship with Rev. Are you going to do something like that in the future? Yeah, I, actually, uh, me and Rev, we have a bunch of stuff planned. Um, yeah, I can't cannot give you uh, details right now, but we always talked about doing more stuff like that. So you never know, maybe soon. Uh, I wanted to see my whole interface. Okay, so um, yeah, I, I honestly don't don't pay attention to those things. Uh, but the resolution of the Dynamesh right now is 128. Um, I don't even know. There you go. Uh, you have a, a, maybe these. I always get confused. So this tool is uh, 310, like uh, 3000 and no, like uh, what? It's three ten hundred thousand, so three hundred ten thousand, something like that. What, whatever. I, I, I don't. I honestly don't, don't look at numbers. Uh, I only look when I'm doing the low poly. <laughs> I don't really worry too much about uh, the stuff in ZBrush, uh, unless I'm working with a proper topology that I know that I need to subdivide. And but th that's a very different thing than what I'm doing today. Will be doing a volume two of your anatomy. Yes, I'm actually. I actually started already the volume two. Uh, I posted some stuff uh, in the beginning of the year. I have some other studies that I haven't posted yet. Uh, I'll probably uh, come back to it maybe later this year, uh, beginning next year. Uh, so about the brushes that I'm using, I see a bunch of questions. I've right now i'm basically using the clay buildup uh but i've i've used just the regular clay uh that's the one the brush that i use the most and i slightly tweak it clay brush that i also have on my gum road for free you guys can download but it's basically the clay brush with uh, the focal shift uh tweak it a little bit but honestly, I like the clay buildup because it gives me a little bit of texture. It's not really too much about the, the muscle fibers or whatnot. It's mainly because it gives me a little bit of texture so I can feel uh, the surface as in, in the same fashion as if you are using a rake tool um, in, in clay, you can use the rake to actually kind of even now the surface so that that's how i i like that's one of the reasons i, I like to use the clay build up it also fills in the cavities uh, super nicely <laughs> oh well i haven't done the full torso this is basically very simple right so it's still kind of very blocked out and you know uh simple shapes but yeah if, if, if you if you establish good proportions and then if you have a good gesture and that's what I'm realizing with these this type of studies that I'm doing is it's much much easier to find the anatomy to do the construction after you have a really good lay-in or a really nice uh, block out right so if all of my curves are correct so imagine like even, even my legs right I do I do see some mistakes that I need to fix but Imagine like the silhouette, it's correct. The proportions like in three dimensions are correct. Or let's just make this simpler, right? So if my rib cage is correct, it's very easy to sculpt the ribs. So it's very easy to sculpt the abs because uh, where 
like the the foundation is there already um, you can receive that type of secondary form information uh, so in in, in, an, in in different words i can do the construction uh, much easier if everything else is, is correct so th that's what i'm realizing with these type of studies uh, especially on paper it's very easy to to see that happening uh, here sculpting and in 3d maybe not that obvious but I'm already seeing a lot of uh, differences, uh, not only on the speed, but also on how how fluid the whole process is. And again, I've uh, been learning this from the, the whole Russian uh, academy method that I kind of started picking up from Ilya. Yeah, also shout out to my brother, Ramon Hurtado, which uh, I, I had the pleasure of taking a workshop uh, earlier this year as well. He's kind of uh, amazing painter and amazing uh, draftman. Um, really amazing teacher. Probably the best teacher I've ever had. Uh, super nice guy. And he he's super into the, the whole 19th century uh, era so it, it, it's very similar in the way they used to approach uh, uh, figurative art and yeah I learned so much from him so shout out to my buddy Ramon if you guys don't know Ramon Hurtado just just google it too uh, it's a must follow for sure all right yeah time to unmute the song thanks guys <laughs> Yeah, you guys gotta gotta keep me on track here. If you guys have any questions about uh, teachers or you know like in anything education uh, related to my education I'm more than happy to, to talk about these things uh, I love taking courses and, and 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 I wish I could take much more and I know some artists after they reach a certain level they start saying like oh you know like uh, I'm so good that I don't need to take classes or <laughs> um, I've, I've, yeah, I've seen a bunch of people like maybe not saying this with this these words but kind of you know uh, almost al almost doing it so I don't know about you guys but to me there, there's so much to learn uh, and there is nothing better than just giving compliments to whoever. It just feels good, right? So if the guy helped me, if I if I took if I had like a really good time, if I learned a lot, I don't know why people kind of hide these things or they don't talk openly about that. You know, this is such a shame. So uh, I'm more than happy to just talk about any any classes that I've taken or any teachers that I've had, mentors, friends that helped me along the way. Um, I will never forget them and they are definitely part of, of who I am and my journey and my career. All right, so, you know, what I'm doing now is just kind of rounding these forms a little bit more. I'm kind of, for now, I'm kind of quite happy with how the whole structure is going. Uh, although th this guy here maybe should be more like this. I want to kind of have like more like a continuous flow from here to there to really kind of emphasize uh, this thing stretching and then we can sell the pinch on this side a little bit better uh, and, and in fact we may need to let's just do, just do this Exaggerate a little bit this. Oops. And 
And now what I'm gonna do is just do like a quick plumb line from the heels of the staining leg to see where I am in comparison to my reference. So here it goes to the pit of the neck. So this should actually come a little bit more this way. Now we both your stick till you fell down. So here so there's a little bit of rotation to this side too that I think I missed yes there you go okay yes that's much better I was missing the completely overlook the rotation so the rotation will give me uh, a nice break here on this form because this is kind of coming towards us How's it going, man? <laughs> but now I just want I need to make sure that this is kind of going backwards a little bit so I want to kind of compress clavicle, um, the scapula here a little bit, move this arm back, so we really open up the chest, and then uh, we can start compressing uh, the shoulder with the whole uh, shoulder girdle here, and then This capilla. Um, yeah, maybe something like that. Just do a quick save. And maybe we should actually do a quick polygroup for the arms so we can hide this easier. Alright, so we can continue working on this. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna enable. Uh, the floor just so we feel that this is grounded and what is this thing okay let's just hide the head and the hands I actually don't need this okay let's just paint this guy down okay all right this is better So let's keep jamming, we'll see. So this angle is looking better. You can actually feel the rib cage here. I know I'm kind of quiet right now, it's just because I'm kind of concentrated. Um, really trying to make sure this doesn't get stiff as we start to define some of these forms. Because uh, again, it's very easy to happen. 
A little preparation will make you and your family safer in All right, time for another break, I guess. A week's worth of food and water, radio, flashlight, batteries, and a first aid kit are a good start. Oh man, now that I was super excited. To learn more, visit safetyactioncenter.pge.com. Hi, I'm Jacob, a Shane Company okay. jewelry consultant. I have. All right, so let's see. Damn, it's been an hour already. Time does fly, as they say. So, yeah, sorry if I miss some questions or comments, but. If there was a waiting list for mentorship classes, so if you go to my website, glaukulongi.com, there is a, uh, under courses, I believe, you can just kind of type in your email and then you get notified every time I uh, release classes or, you know, like courses and things like that. And I promise to not send spans. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, Yeah, okay. Yeah, so this style of music, it's called lo-fi. How do you go about taking courses when working full-time professionally? So that's a very good question. I tend to either do classes on the weekend. So for example, this year I took two terms with uh, under CGMA, which is the uh, really nice, uh, academic traditional painting and drawing school uh, in New York um, and and I, I took those classes on Saturdays um, so it was maybe three or four hours every Saturday morning um, that, that, that's about it or so for example the workshop I took uh, early this year I think I believe it was a three-day workshop um, so I think started Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So I took Friday off from work and then of course, uh, Saturday and Sunday, I was able to do those. Uh, the only thing of course I cannot do is just study or take classes that are during the day. Um, and, and obviously my work is my priority, right? So if I need to work late or if I need to work on the weekend, or if I have any something, something or an assignment from like a homework from the class. Uh, I mean, I, I might not be able to do it, right? So, you know, uh, just kind of, you need to prioritize. Uh, again, on my free time, I'm studying, I'm, I'm kind of having fun, I'm learning, but the work is the, the priority. Uh, that That's kind of, kind of obvious, but just want to make sure that that's also understandable. Um, um, so, yeah. So daily recommended amount of time we should be doing art to improve. I would say that that's also a very good question. As much as you can, it's a good answer, Max. <laughs> uh, I like to say that it takes me a, a, a little bit to get in the mood. So if I only have 30 minutes, um, I think I'm going to probably just watch something or read a book or watch something I mean, like watch a class or watch a tutorial or something like that. Uh, if I really need to sculpt or model or or draw, I want to have at least an hour and a half to two hours because uh, usually the first 30 minutes is just kind of, uh, it's required to just warm up and, you know, like getting into the mindset especially I, I usually do this after work so uh, it takes a little a, a little while to kind of unwind from the work and get into the proper mood for studying so if i only have 30 minutes if i'm just tired or if i'm, I, I'm just exhausted uh, but i still feel like trying to learn some video i would probably just watch a, a video or uh, like a demo from an artist that i like or something like that Yeah, enough to where you don't burn out. That's 100%. Yeah. Yeah, I remember uh, maybe like 10 years ago, I decided to do 
uh, at that time, like people were, were talking about sabbaticals and things like that. So I was working in Brazil. Uh, I decided to take three months off from work. I was living with my parents back then. I decided to take three months off to just study. <laughs> the first week was amazing. I studied maybe like 12 hours or something like that every single day. Uh, then by the third week, the fourth week, uh, the second month, I was like completely exhausted. I I had all of the time in the world to do, just do whatever I wanted. Uh, but I just didn't feel like studying because studying, if you are really studying, it's hard. It's, it's like working out, right? You're working out your muscles, your brain. Um, so it was very hard. So then I learned that I'm not too productive. I, I can only, I can only produce so much work, right? So for me, uh, I'll say maybe like eight to 10 hours is the, like the very, very limit that I can do. And I don't think I can do, uh, if I'm just sculpting like this, for example, if I can do this more than 10 hours every single day, I think that that would be too much. What's up? What's up, Luis? Yeah, definitely. That's, that's a really good point too, Max. Uh, the more you do it, the more resilience you get. Um, and, uh, and then you can do longer, longer hours, but it, it, it gets, it gets to, to the point that you may just get exhausted. Right. And then, um, yeah, you, you gotta make sure that you are giving yourself some time to digest all of the, the new things, all of the new stuff that you are learning. Uh, similar with the gym, right? I really like to make analogies with gym and works out and workout because everybody kind of understands it. So you train your muscle. If you don't recover, if you don't feed it with enough protein and carbs and whatever, uh, and then get some rest, the muscles will not recover. And by that, it means that you will not be able to work harder the next time. You're not be able to even uh, perceive some gains from the previous session. So, you know, that's a really nice way of saying, Hey guys, just relax, make sure you're, you're taking your time to, to kind of digest, uh, what you've been learning. All right. So time to, uh, get back to this. I think at this point, what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna probably uh, throw the head in, just because I feel like the torso it's at it's in good shape, but I think I need a little bit more information to kind of continue keep pushing this. Just kind of zoom out a little bit, look at the big picture. I think the whole thickness of the torso uh, it should be wider. Yes, that's better. I don't work with the Cintiq anymore, but one thing that I that I that I was doing that I, I definitely do on paper and do on when sculpting is actually stand and you know kind of walk back. Uh, I remember doing that with the Cintiq at work. So I would just kind of stand and look far away from the monitor and people were like, hey, what are you doing, dude? And then I realized that I can just do this, right? You can, you can just kind of zoom out and really see the thing from far away. Uh, that really helps. Like this little icon here kind of helps too. This is actually new for me. Uh, I just installed the latest ZBrush update, uh, the 21 and uh, just got this thing because I had this disable in the previous version and uh, it's actually interesting. I need to remember to look at this more. But anyways, I like doing this, right? I, I, I like kind of zoom, zooming out. And then from this distance, I really like what I see. Uh, I like this angle as well. Uh, I really like how the weight distribution, it's really starting to feel like pressing on this leg, on the left leg. So these are 
good things that I'm noticing that I'm kind of quite happy with by the stage that we are at. Uh, the whole juiciness of the form and you know like the the cool stuff that we like to sculpt and we like to do which is secondary forms and uh, uh, the details and all of that stuff that really makes the piece kind of sing uh, in a way I haven't I haven't done those yet so kind of saving those for later but even the legs they are like very basic and if you look at the knee for example very simple right there is not much going on uh, but once you you go in here and then start to establish like little forms here and there so just for example if I kind of zoom in on my reference here and then at the time that I start doing things like this right so I'm gonna start defining this guy here uh, so I'm defining this and then you have a little fat pad going this way uh, and then you can start blocking out this guy here Find this a little bit more. Uh, so we are actually pressing here, so we do see a little bit of compression going on here. And then you have the tendon kind of connecting everything. And then we can actually emphasize uh, this form here a little bit. Uh, the fat pads pick up the darkest darks or uh, some big contrasts but the, the whole point is that once you start doing things like this you see like how uh, a little bit of work really makes these these pieces much more interesting uh, but but you know I, I, I don't want to do this right now I want to save those for later because that's not that's not really important at this moment I'm not really trying to uh, impress or finalize or you know do anything like that I'm just really trying to focus on the gesture on the on the big proportions the big shapes the whole purpose of this study so that's another thing that I would recommend you guys doing is if you set yourself a goal of studying something uh, remember that if you are studying you probably you're probably not good at it uh, and then you will struggle and then if you are not struggling uh, you're probably not studying hard or uh, maybe you're not getting too much out of that specific study so it, it shouldn't be easy uh, I gotta admit this is this is definitely not easy for me uh, it, nev it never felt easy uh, and and the moments that it did feel easy uh, it either I, I, I either got something that didn't look good <laughs> or uh, I was just doing something just kind of repeating something that I've done like a billion times before which at, at that point is, is just kind of getting uh, some some repetition in which is good but uh, you know maybe not the most beneficial if you're trying to learn something new uh, the repetition of moving the, the the hand across the screen or sculpting form that that, that that will always help right that's not the type of repetition that I'm talking about I'm talking about uh, you know how to do this you keep doing the same thing over and over and over and then you get a always you always get the same results so you know finding the proper balance between all of these things is definitely essential and of course everything that I say here on my stream it's my opinion uh, and I'm not always right and actually most of the time most of the times I'm definitely not correct so you know take everything with a grain of salt a and, will make you and, your family safer and in an I guess it's time it's for water, another Q&A session all right so yeah this is coming along I'm actually uh, quite pleased with where we are at this moment I really like the gesture that we are capturing here on the back uh, yeah that look that looks cool yeah maybe not the arms too much but yeah yeah I might not be able to work on the arms today I think 
that might be a little bit too much especially because i'm taking my time and talking to you guys but all right so let's let's see if you guys have any questions do you have hidden references no i'm I'm, I totally have a bunch of references, a bunch of photos and from uh, models. Uh, actually, this is just one model that I bought some packs. Um, yeah, so it's not a really 360. Uh, I have like a different, a couple of angles from a similar pose. It's not exactly the same pose. Uh, I do have some packs that I bought uh, many years ago that they are literally 360 photos. There's actually a really good book that comes with a CD room called uh, Virtual Pose, I believe. And then you can scroll through each, every single angle. Uh, I actually use, use that to do my first full uh, study uh, in pose without symmetry back in 2007, eight. Um, and, and it turned out to be one of my best pieces at that time because I did have a uh, really great references and being 360 is very helpful, right? So you, you're not guessing. Uh, what I have right now, like one pose, the guy's like this and the other one is like that. The other one is twisted a little bit more to the side. So it's, it's, it's a little bit weird. So I'm actually, actually composing uh, everything together myself and really trying to emphasize the things that I like and the things that I don't like. Um, you know, kind of picking and choosing what I want to do with this piece. But of course, the poses that I have are not completely random. Uh, they are somewhat related to a contraposto, to, to what we're building right now. Moving back in your chair is more natural. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, Uh, I found that after a few months of working professionally for the first time, it became really hard to even touch ZBrush after work. A year later, I'm starting to have a lot more endurance. Yeah, that's totally true. Uh, also, surrounding yourself with people uh, that like to do personal work, um, uh, that likes to push themselves outside of work, that, that's also helpful as well. Um, and hopefully, we will be able to keep doing these streams. Uh, I'm definitely not doing this every single day. Uh, it turns out that this week it's a kind of uh, very good week for me um, to stream at night, but don't expect me to do this every single day. But I'll try to do as much as, as possible or as, as, as much as I find useful for me and for you guys. Will you ever do some portfolio art piece reviews in the future? Yes, totally. Uh, actually, I have I had this crazy idea last night because I definitely want to do some portfolio reviews and I've done a, like a few of those in the past in a live format and I think they are very helpful. Um, I do want to kind of invite someone to the channel and have a conversation. Uh, I, I don't want to, to sound like, of course, I may do some interviews in the future, but what I'm trying to say here, I, I want to have a talk with maybe a beginner artist, or I want to talk uh, to uh, someone trying to break in the industry, or, you know, uh, and we can totally talk about the portfolio, but I want to talk more about everything else, right? Uh, I really want to try to get into the mindset of, 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 of this type of subject and uh you know I, I think that that might be very interesting and doing it live may open up for different type of questions and people can possibly relate to what i'm going through or with this person is going through as well so that might be interesting so let me know if you guys think that's a good idea i never seen anyone doing doing that uh, again, I'm probably probably people have done that in the past. I'm not like a genius coming up with like uh, something completely new, but I think that could be very interesting just to kind of uh, shuffle things around a little bit. So I'll think more about it and I'll let you guys know. Um, how did you figure out what you really like to sculpt? Um, that's interesting. So I started my career as a 2D artist 
video editor. So I was doing video editing and I was doing motion graphics and a little bit of 2D in the sense of composing things in, in 2D space. It's not that I was drawing or painting or anything like that, uh, but I was doing like animated uh, uh, little like clips and movies and things like that. So. Uh, and then I got into 3D and then I wanted to become an animator. So my first few classes and my first few efforts were totally towards to animation. That's maybe where I realized that I really love movement and I really love attitude and pose and, and you know, kind of gesture. Uh, and then things kept going and evolving and I ended up sculpting and uh, the human form, the human body, figurative art, really... I really love it. Uh, I really love the human figure as a as a whole, um, and of course, I also love doing creatures, believable stuff, um, grounded creatures. So, I guess it was just kind of trial by, uh, you know, you go ahead and you try some stuff, and then you kind of figure out what you like doing or not. I've been studying the gorilla from 3D scan store and it's difficult. It's a great advantage to compare the scans in my study. Yeah, totally. That's definitely a really good uh, thing to do. I was going to ask that. You don't feel like you're missing a little bit of a twist to the size. I think this is probably from a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, I was definitely missing the twist. I do think this is a little bit better now. Um, uh, yeah, this is much closer to the references that I have, maybe I should actually twist this even further. Um, and actually, I think my reference is actually tilted more like this. Let's, uh, sometimes when I'm in doubt, what I like to do is just kind of go crazy and then I just kind of really go to the extreme to see if I'm actually moving to the right direction. Uh, so just kind of got to remind that the pit of the neck. Yeah, no, I think I think this is this is correct for now. And then you have the ribs here. We're gonna do a little bit of more construction uh, in a second. And then this is definitely a little bit lower. Yeah. All right, sorry, got carried away. <laughs> um, Oh, Daniel Bell, totally, yeah, he's a good buddy of mine. Yeah, we could totally, I could totally reach out to him and we can do stuff together. I really love his work. Yesterday I asked if you are allowed to listen to music at this kind of big studios, are you? Yes, totally. Um, you see like people, uh, even watching movies sometimes, it really depends on, on the, the, the task that they are performing. Uh, but yeah, totally. Like I listen to music when I'm not in meetings, of course. Um, but yeah, you see people listening to music all the time. Like I cannot work without music. This is kind of very normal. Do you still have an interest in developing animation skills or even just like, uh, uh, maybe not, maybe some 2d animation or just for the sake of trying it. But, um, yeah, I kind of lost the interest. I know you're Brazilian, but you have some Italian name. Yeah, I know Longhi is Italian. Uh, unfortunately, I don't speak any Italian at all. Uh, uh, besides Bello or, <laughs> you know, like very classical stuff. But um, yeah, my grand grandfather was from Italy, from uh, a, a very small city 
call Roca Ranieri, Roca Ranieri, I believe, uh, like 30 minutes away from uh, Roma, uh, Rome, or Roma. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't speak Italian at all. Uh, and actually, I went to Italy a couple years ago and I was just speaking English because it was much easier. Do you think travel helps you to keep you motivated for doing studies or personal work in general? Uh, totally. I think to me, just getting to know different people and different cultures, it's very inspiring to and and makes me grow as a human being. Uh, but I gotta admit that this 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 trip that I that I that I did to Italy, um, I spent twenty something days in Europe and probably like fifteen days in 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 Italy. It was just mind blowing um it was kind of a dream coming true for me uh seeing all of those michelangelo bernini's and yeah the whole renaissance stuff right it's just just beautiful beautiful uh there's not much to say about that i mean yeah i got back feeling like oh man i uh, it, it, yeah i felt so so overwhelmed but in a good way All right, all right. <laughs> you guys are making me laugh. All right, cool. So let's just kind of come back to this. Yeah, in Brazil, we speak Portuguese. Uh, oftentimes, you see people uh, referring to Portuguese as Brazilian. Uh, but no, uh, you know, some uh, cultural exchange right now uh, in Brazil, we speak Portuguese, which uh, has uh, a slightly different uh, accent from Portuguese from Portugal, but it's the same language in the same fashion where uh, English is slightly different from uh, uh, British English from uh, American English, for example. your family ready for an emergency you can prepare by mapping out two ways to escape your home creating a supply kit and including your whole family in practice drills for help creating an emergency plan visit safetyactioncenter.pge.com i'm here with video game legend pac-man so how does it feel to have your first ever scratchers tickets for the california lottery fascinating tell me more hmm you can win how much oh man no, oh, this. Uh, I need to, to do something else. Uh, these ads uh, is so boring. Sorry about those, but uh, I, I need to to use these next five minutes to just keep sculpting because I'm craving some forms right now. I think you guys want to see me modeling as well. So, so this here, I want to make sure I'm capturing this. I'm going to clean it up later. I 
and I'm kind of doing a little bit of the construction in my head uh, so not really drawing the whole uh, the whole surface per se so I'm kind of imagining where the rib cage is uh, instead of really drawing everything and really trying to think about the planes so we're seeing this from the front I definitely want to make sure the orientation of these planes are correct and then you have this guy here and this guy there uh, you know you have the seventh rib kind of breaking those forms and then here we do see a little bit of the lats Going back, oh. Prezzo. Is it like a software? Do, do they have like website? Uh, Prezzo music. Um, music app for streamers. Playing browser. Let's see. Okay, I'll check this out later. Uh, th thanks, man. Thanks, how many? This side here again. Let's just kind of keep things clean and just on the gesture for now. Uh, we do see this kind of coming in a little bit. Let's clean up some of these forms. And again, uh, we'll have plenty of time to work on the scapula here. Just want to make sure I'm capturing the whole uh, volume first. Let's just pull this in a little bit. And then I have this guy coming this way here because this is kind of compressing. And then the whole volume here. Actually doing this, and then you have this big fold here. This side here, okay. especially a little bit lower. And then you definitely see the IT. Push 
pushing out here. saying yesterday uh, this whole section we need to work more because now we have uh, the torso and everything's kind of connected so uh, it won't be very straightforward but we'll get there yeah but this is kind of starting to come together This is a little bit too square for my taste. And then from the back, I do like that this is kind of sticking out a little bit. In fact, it should stick out a little bit more. And then let's just compare to... Actually, my whole pelvis, I think, might be a little bit too long. So... Let's just do this. that I said yesterday if you see something that looks off fix it like no matter what it takes especially if you are studying um, and I know sometimes we are like oh but I spent so much time in order to get this right but if you got it right by mistake then you know you, you definitely you should definitely do it again so and it, if it wasn't a mistake you can totally do it again so whenever you feel like oh you know i don't know what what i did but it looks cool uh, just erase it <laughs> and try to replicate it uh, and then do it until it looks nice uh, that really makes you kind of reflect and understand what you're doing or at least should do that it should help you so I kind of went down in the subdivision, uh, so it has a little bit less triangles, and then we're going to start cleaning up some of these forms, because the whole wobbliness kind of bothers me. I love working with very clean forms. Uh, and then there is a whole reason why clean forms matter. and. Back in the day, I used to believe that it uh, was just because it makes things read a little bit better. And although that's that's part of it, uh, there is also the whole unity discussion, right? So, um, you know, what, what, what makes a good design? Uh, it's the whole balance between uh, unity and... Uh, mess right so you are basically organizing uh, sorry i'm uh so this one goes here yeah man this is hard especially when we get to this kind of more conceptual ideas and and my buddy ramon he talks a lot about that too uh the whole organization of the chaos and, and how important organizing your work is and, and, and I truly agree with that in, the, in this case uh, having clean shapes really makes you start to organize and kind of pick the areas that you want things to stand out a little bit more and also makes you read what you have 
a little bit nicer. And don't get me wrong, it's actually hard to kind of unify things uh, because you really need to, you, you cannot suggest too much. Although you can suggest, you cannot kind of play with uh, scribbles, right? You need to really know uh, what you're building in order to simplify it. So that's, that's why I think it's a good exercise to keep things simplified in a way. So then you have this kind of coming this way here. All right, I'm just gonna simplify some of these forms. I don't wanna lose uh, some of these corners, but I do want to make them simpler. fix uh, more stuff on the legs probably another day but this is yeah it's coming along Still have a long way ahead of us, but yeah, hopefully you guys are finding this useful. Uh, and let me know what kind of topics you guys want me to cover as well, or or even why you were watching me sculpt. That, that th this type of information is it's very useful for me, so I can kind of tailor uh, some of these streams kind of help you guys out in the future but and why by that I mean like do you just you're just interested in seeing the way I sculpt or are you trying to learn a, a particular technique or are you just having fun or you just wanted to kind of sculpt along so like what, what's the reason why you are here basically that's what I'm asking not in a mean way, right? <laughs> I really appreciate everybody here. Uh, what I'm trying to say, I'm just curious, right? So I'm kind of uh, curious in a sense that I, I want to use this sort of information for for better, right? Stop in a little bit and kind of read some of the comments. Prepared for a power outage. All right. If strong winds, my... hot weather, and low humidity. Q. All right. Let's see. Uh. 
well, I kind of lost the whole thread, but um, let me see. Uh, cool. I like hearing you talk about artistic concepts. Oh, that's good to know. So yeah, I love talking about these things. So I'll keep, I will definitely keep talking about those. Thanks for answering these questions and for doing this. If you were, thanks. Well, my pleasure. Um, yeah, I really, I really want to, to help and to share uh, the little bit that I know. So yeah, more than happy to do those. Uh, I really love connecting with people as well. Uh, To be honest, this is 6 a.m. here. I don't even know why I'm here. <laughs> That's funny. Well, at least you are, so I'm glad you're having fun. <laughs> I think I'm here to learn more about how you use different brushes to create landmarks and how you use strokes more efficiently. Okay, that's good. It's good to know. Maybe this, this exercise here is not the best for that, uh, in a way. Uh, uh, definitely not the, the fastest approach um, but yeah I'll, I'll probably sculpt with different different approaches in, in the near future as well uh, but like I said this has been a slightly different exercise for me so oh that's good that's good to know uh, you're here because you want to see me sculpt, uh, studying ZBrush and traditional uh, as well. That's that's awesome, yeah. Because I tend to lose hours on a single part while you make it in minutes. Well, there are two components to that. First, uh, I've done this a lot, right? Uh, but I think the most important one is trying to focus on what matters. So if I'm in the phase of trying to establish big forms, try to establish big forms. If you are in the phase of trying to establish secondary forms, try to establish secondary forms. And again, of course, you're going to be touching one another, right? But I think the, 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 the biggest problem that I see, and including myself, is when you are trying to do the big shapes and then you get lost into maybe tertiary forms, secondary forms, and then you forget that you're supposed to work on the big forms. And then you kind of keep going around in loops because you don't get nowhere. Because you see the, the little forms, they are start to look cool. But when you zoom out, the, the big forms are wrong. And then you mess up the big forms. But ends up like, you know, like breaking the little forms. So, yeah, try to, to move a little bit more systematic in a way that you kind of establish what's important first and then secondarily and then you know so on and so forth um so for my discord community so you guys can just go to my website and there's a link for it but the the whole uh forum or the community i believe it's just glauco longi that's just my name uh but you can just go to my website you just go it's free of course so i think there's maybe like 1200 people there uh i don't think it's been very active anymore but it was cool i i know some people still post on a daily basis so yeah just check it out the day with the press Oh, thank, thanks, says Teaser. Uh, I appreciate the words. I'm glad you you are getting inspired by this. I, I I definitely this doing this definitely inspires me a lot. So right on, right on, Brian. That's that's good to hear. Hey, Hafa. So so Hafa is asking if I prefer to sculpt uh, digitally using. Uh, a tablet or uh, some sort of a uh, monitor tablet like a Cintiq. Uh, I do have a Cintiq here and then I spend 
maybe the past six years just working with the Cintiq. But like over the years, just being like hunched over and like having my, my back arch, even with the, the arm that I'd have like a full arm, uh, I started having like back pain. So I ended up switching to just a regular Intus. That's what I'm actually using right now. Uh, a medium size Intus. And I feel much better. I'm actually far away from the monitor. Uh, my posture is a little bit more upright. Um, and then it kind of really reduced the pain from my back, but I do love working on the monitor. So a little, sometimes here and there I go to the Cintiq and work on the Cintiq, but uh, it, it didn't really help. It, it really kind of made my back worse and worse over time. That's, that's good to hear. I'm here for the dad jokes. <laughs> I know who you are, dude. Uh, yeah, we should do more, more dad jokes here. Uh, yeah, I, I love dad jokes. So uh, if you guys have some good dad jokes, just throw those in. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, I'll get, I'll be prepared next time. Keep pushing. Yeah. Gotta keep pushing, man. Uh, all right. So I'm also watching because once you get in figure and I'm okay, that's, that's good. Right on, right on. So the whole investment on the Cintiq, I mean, it's it's totally personal preference, right? Uh, it's it definitely it, it feels cooler in a way. Um, uh, well, what else can you say, right? Like, it, it is worth the investment. I, I guess it's up to you. I don't think it makes you better. It's just a different. Um, I neither think, I neither believe that makes it easier. I think it's just uh, maybe more pleasing, if you will, uh, because you are actually drawing on the monitor. But like I said, I do like being a little bit kind of far away from the monitor. Uh, it gives me a little bit of distance. But that being said, I spent the past six years working on the Cintiq. So, you know, just take it with a grain of salt. Oh man, this guy, <laughs> which part of my body is thin? I'm not gonna read that out loud. Oh, dude, that, that was a good dad joke. Uh, yeah, no worries, you got it. All right, all right, so let's just get back to the... Gotta keep pushing on this model, you know? Um, so... Yeah, so what I, what I want to do now, I mean, the whole body, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's in good shape. I mean, not, not perfect, but not bad for what it is. I do like the gesture. I do like the proportions. Uh, I'm going to try to get the same feeling for the legs, uh, for the arms, sorry. Maybe, maybe 20 more minutes or 30 more minutes tops. So let's just see how far we can get. Let's just kind of move the hands in a little bit. So this little guy, I'm going to do this. Yeah, okay. And then this little guy, I'm going to do this. Dynamash this. Uh, 
make this so the hands I, I like sculpting the hands but they do take some time in order to to make something that looks like a hand so I'm just gonna do like a very simple gesture of, of the pose again we can do probably just gonna do one stream just on the hands themselves because uh, they do take some time to, to block them out and Make sure we are capturing the this here. Let's just kind of work on the. Yeah, it's more like a, a David uh, contraposto, but instead of holding the little thing, this guy just has his hands kind of. If you compare, this is probably like this, and I want to play up that. Group this so I can mask this easily. Find the elbow and then just kind of isolate this a little bit so I can really use the move brush without uh, really destroying anything. Look at this form here. We can actually see this little guy. And then I have this here. Here. Definitely want to keep the the wrist more boxy. very simple silhouettes and, and whatnot just trying to really capture the and I feel like I keep repeating myself but it's it's mainly for me and for you to remind what like what we are doing at this moment Then this, this is actually 
here. We're gonna try to just find. this one then here you would have the clavicle coming here and you have this ridge we can actually see from the side yes for now we're gonna have time to fix it later uh, just make sure this is connecting to the scapula here and then from this angle the arm should be a little bit thicker And then I guess it's time to work on the other arm. So maybe we should do this. So we'll do this one. with the shoulder just because it's a little bit more obvious what's going on because the whole arm is kind of compressed in just a little one one big form here uh, I tend to find this a little bit easier to manipulate uh, rather than when, than when you have like a very long limb uh, which makes judging uh, the proportions a little bit harder so when, it, when it's a little bit closer and tighter it's it's much easier to just compare and to, to just get things Correct. Uh, at least for me. And then from this angle, yeah, this is actually what I see. Just want to make sure we are uh, emphasizing these arms a little bit. And let's just give it some proper thickness. For the biceps and then here let's see yes I do see the volume from the forearm and then this gets a little bit thicker here we are not lost Big tobacco thinks every black oh, face man. is a new place to These make a ads. Oh my give to our communities to gain trust but still Oof. all right so let's go back to the chat all right this is kind of coming together um yeah i see some small issues on proportions still uh some of these lines are a little bit too defined for my taste uh, and too stylized uh, 
and actually this lag, this needs a little bit too low. Hell yes. This is much better. Let's just do a quick check again. Uh, head. And then if we go, so the, the main proportion that I use uh, when I'm drawing or when I'm sculpting is like top of the head to the crotch, uh, crotch to the bottom of the heels. Um, of course, this is dependent on the perspective, right? Uh, but if you look at someone flat out, generic speaking, um, top of the head to the crotch, crotch to the bottom of the, of the heel. Uh, it's somewhat a, a good good measurement to, to have in mind. Um, and I, I, I know I said I was gonna go back to the to the comments, but I keep seeing mistakes, so. So another another thing that I've learned, like I mentioned that I was, uh, that I took CGMA, not CGMA, sorry, uh, uh, Grand Central Academy, GCA. I, I, I believe I said CGMA uh, in the past, but it, it's not CGMA. CGMA, I mean, amazing school. I have a bunch of people that, friends that teach over there, and I know a lot of, pe of people, but no, the, the the, the course that I took over uh, Grand Central Academy uh, was with uh, Diana, Diana Buitrago, if you guys want to, maybe I'm not pronouncing her last name correct, but it's Diana Buitrago, Buitrago, something like that. But anyways, it, it was a, a great experience. Again, uh, I feel like I'm very fortunate to always find really good teachers, but that's that's the class that I took over the period of... Uh, maybe four or five months every Saturday morning. Uh, it was uh, about painting in oils, but but anyways, w one of one of the things that uh, one of the exercises that we did that was very interesting is you work on a on a on the assignment for the day, and then you, the next day you don't touch that anymore. So for example, we would I would paint the legs as 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 better like as accurate sorry, as accurate as I can. And then when I move up to the torso, for example, I could not touch the legs anymore. Um, so, so that was very interesting. Uh, so even though I keep going back to the legs, I, I do want to tell myself, hey, don't worry about the legs, everything's going to look all right. And then I can just do a later pass on everything and just kind of fix the mistakes overall. Uh, so that's another thing that sometimes we spend and including myself, we do tend to kind of go around in circles, trying to fix everything. But uh, if you really think about it, once you, once you work on the rest of the torso, um, you may need to go tweak the legs no matter what. So it might be more efficient to just do it once. Uh, but I know, at least for me, it really bothers me to be sculpting the torso, uh, seeing a mistake, or and not fixing it right away. Uh, th these are all conceptual ideas, right? So we don't need to take any of them to heart. Um, and I like to just work in the way that I think it's appropriate. But when I'm taking classes and when I'm doing exercises, uh, I, I want to be respectful with them uh, in a sense that I want to take the most out of, out of the exercise, right? So if I'm just keeping 
ahead and not doing what the exercise tells me to do, maybe I get a decent looking motto, but maybe, you know, I didn't, I didn't gain, gain as much as I could if I had stick to the whole process in the first place. So just remember that when we are doing exercises, in this case, for example, my whole goal, of course, I want to sculpt a really nice model, but the goal is not to just sculpt something looking cool. Uh, if that was the goal, th there, there are much faster ways to, to accomplish that and much easier ways as well than what I'm doing here. So the goal here is to study gesture, to study uh, different approaches, to try to incorporate different techniques and, you know, get out of the comfort zone and etc, etc, etc. All right, so let's just go back to the chat to see. Okay, so let's, let's do this. All right. Tão lindo o Cotia. <risos> Massa. Uh... Putz, Marco. Uh, so, yeah, I do have some lumbar spine. Uh actually issues it the easiest way to describe is just a dislocated disc or a herniated disc but that's not really what i have i have a i was born with a, a defect on one of the vertebrae on the lower spine and over time uh, my whole spine shift so it's kind of completely offset uh, because of the deficiency that I that I was born with, where one of the hooks is kind of messed up, there's like a little bit of a ridge in the. But but anyways, yeah, I do have lower back pain, and then I, I do physiotherapy. I do a bunch of like very specific exercises for that, and the whole Cintiq thing being like hunched over uh, didn't help. Didn't and and I actually contributed for my problem because uh, my hips were rotated. Uh, on the interior way so yeah that's good to know i mean maybe you, you you're not you're not gonna face um any of those issues but you never know without obvious bias uh santa monica or naughty dog well i have been flat honest i have a huge respect for both studios and I feel very fortunate to have worked with both studios. So, uh, yeah, nothing more than respect and, and good memories from, from those studios and still have a bunch of friends on both of them. Uh, very, again, feel very fortunate to be able to contribute to some of their projects and, and had my share working there. Uh, I don't have any preference, honestly, they are just different, different cultures, different studios, different type of projects. Uh, hey, hello from Istanbul. How's it going, man? I went to Istanbul a couple years ago. Uh, pretty awesome city. Actually reminds me a lot of Sao Paulo. Uh, and I have some friends from Istanbul as well. So good stuff. What's up, Adam? Damn! If you guys don't know Adam Scott, actually we were talking about Naughty Dog and we used to work together over Naughty Dog. Adam, <laughs> good to see you, man. Uh, how many polys? Well, all of them, you know, because, uh, you know, they don't count. <laughs> and what brushes? All of them as well. Uh, <laughs> Oh man, good to see you, man. Well, I'm not seeing you, but I'm glad you were here. Um, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, I saw like G Giovanni. Uh, yeah, good buddy of mine as well. 
I saw his his latest uh, marble piece look, looking beautiful. Uh, I do look at classical sculptures um, all the time. I'm very much inspired by all the academic stuff. Hey Adam, you know I've learned from you, so that that's 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 the whole reason why we can do this is because you you taught me the way. Uh, yeah, I miss you, buddy. I miss I miss miss the crew. Ho hope you and family, every, 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 everybody is well. You guys should check out Adam's work. Uh, amazing character artist as well. So Adam Scott. check out his work and I guess it's time to come back and spend maybe a uh, last round maybe like 20 more minutes what do you guys say um, yeah 20 minutes sound sound about right all right so Let's just work a little bit more on this arm. And you know, really going for the silhouette. Again, same concepts that we've been discussing. Trying to keep things simple, not overly complicating things. Although I want to refine a little bit more of the elbow. Uh, in this case, there is a, a very obvious triangle that happens. I'm gonna get too too much specific on that, but again, keep things simple. And really looking at the silhouette here. This guy, actually the whole triceps is kind of pushing down here. And then we can see the compression of this guys. So, and then you have like a really nice breakup on the silhouette here. This is your alarm on an ordinary vacation. Hello, ma'am. This is your wake-up call. <sighs> this is your alarm. On oh, a another vacation. ad. All right, I, I, I gotta keep working because uh, I've been slacking for the past maybe twenty minutes or so. So I need to. Uh, I want to spend a couple. A little, a little bit more time before we call this uh, a night. I just want to be able to refine everything to kind of get the whole thing to the certain level of polish. Yeah, not too much worried. Not too worried. Too much worried about like this. We can fix this later. We can either dynamesh or uh, refine the topology, whatever. That that's not the all right. Same same deal with the other arm. Gonna keep this boxy uh, for the wrists and simplifying things a little bit. Okay. Let's see from this angle. I think it should be a little bit thicker overall. 
but I do like some of these forms that we have here. then this other arm here it feels a little bit on the short side so I'm gonna just make this hand a little bit uh, lower and then we can increase the forearm just a tiny bit and just make this a little bit thicker as well move this down yeah this feels better uh, we're seeing a little bit of thickness here and there Let's just kind of find a silhouette. So on the on the video topic thing, uh, ideas for videos that we talked a little bit uh, today. Something another thing that I want to do is to find traditional artists that never touch ZBrush and they want to learn how to sculpt in ZBrush. And and do maybe a session or or like a guidance tutorial or whatever however you want to call it uh, basically imagine someone that doesn't know too much about 3d uh, and don't really care too much about the whole technical aspect of 3d they just want to model and just they just want to sculpt um, so this is this is another idea that that I have. I want to do something like that, you know, like find like a really good traditional artist, or someone that it's that that it's very 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 ingrained in traditional art and wants to just sculpt, uh, maybe for fun or wants to get into digital sculpting, uh, and you know just do kind of a mentoring session or something live, and go over the basic the the concepts behind working digitally and things that they should be aware uh, they probably have no idea what a triangle is right so we need to cover the very basics of uh, art in the computer in the sense of uh, 3d modeling so th that sounds very interesting to me and and I, I've, I've helped people like that along my journey my career uh, but I never really recorded a video but I always felt like I, I, I maybe there is a video, maybe people already done this, but again, I'm not aware. So I'm gonna probably just do it one myself. If you guys have any more ideas, again, of videos and things you guys want to see me cover. Uh, we also talked about the whole uh portfolio review interview however you want to call it with uh beginners or maybe interns or people trying to break into the industry and having a chat live instead of just talking to the pros uh talking with beginners i think that's very interesting it's gonna introduce uh different topics and different type of questions uh, and maybe you guys can actually ask them questions as well uh you know that might be interesting. Uh, I also have a couple more other video ideas that I want to tackle in the future, but again, very open to suggestions. In Now that my forms are a little bit better established, I'm starting to use a little bit more of the anatomy construction that I keep talking about. Uh, it's at a point that I need to kind of start using uh, 
uh, more like anatomical landmarks and whatnot to really help me build and navigate through the complexion of some of these shapes. But still keeping everything kind of loose and generic in a way. And rotating the model, this is a little bit too square. Maybe 10 more minutes and we're going to call it a night. Uh, I think I'm going to connect the head. I think we are definitely missing the head. Um, so let's just do this. So the head in this pose is really tilted down, um, kind of facing this way, this way here. What's up, Gordon? What's up? What's up, man? All right, I'll, I'll go back to the to the questions in a little bit. Let me just do this maybe like 15 more minutes, just kind of block out the head. And
all right i think this is that that's it for today guys um i'm, I'm feeling really exhausted to be very honest with you my day started pretty early but yeah super happy with the progress uh if we look at how we started everything today uh, basically like this right uh we had the legs find them a little bit we grab the torso and then we have something like this so very pleased with the results there's still a long journey ahead of us in order to make this uh, decent but the, the whole exercise has been super helpful for me I'm learning a lot uh, and it's been a blast sharing the process along the way with you guys and hopefully you guys are also able to to gather something from this exercise uh, the whole one of the things that I really like about uh, academic drawing is that time was actually a thing so if you go back to the 19th century for example uh, the academies or even even today right uh, the, the way they, they think about uh, like drawing or painting the nude model uh, for many different reasons they actually think about the time uh, they also think about blocks of time so maybe you have three sessions and then each session you need to accomplish certain things uh, I don't I don't see a lot of this mentality in the 3d world um, including myself uh, sometimes we just you know we just stick to we just do it until it looks good which ultimately that's what we want to do professionally but when when studying th that might be beneficial to uh, I, I mean I, I I need to spend a little bit more time on just thinking about how I'm gonna relay this information because I don't want this to sound uh, the wrong way as well so uh, yeah maybe let, let me just think a little bit more about it because I do think that timing yourself and management managing time uh, may help along the journey but I also don't think focusing on speed that's definitely not what I'm trying to say the speed comes with accuracy and, and with practice and, and the reason why they do that with the models is it's not because they want to, to do it fast it's because uh, because of different reasons right so maybe they are paying the model they need to accomplish something in that, that amount of sessions uh, it also make forces you to only focus on what's really important so if i only need to if i only have three hours or three sessions to make this full figure uh, i wouldn't i wouldn't be spending a lot of time like on on the speedo like for example right I would probably just kind of block out the hands first and try to finish the head like the, you know it really makes you think more about how you are actually using your time uh, which i think it's an amazing uh, exercise and thing to have in mind uh, and in the industry you need to complete certain tasks in a certain amount of time um, but i don't want this to sound that Oh, you need to worry about speed. No, that, that's not a. It's nothing to do about. Nothing to do with speed. Let me just mute this thing. So, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. I will elaborate a little bit more on that on a different different day. Maybe the next time we stream. Uh, most likely, I'm not gonna be streaming tomorrow. By the way, uh, but I may I may be back on Thursday uh, if things go well and maybe put a couple more hours onto this guy uh, again uh, it's coming along we we'll still have a, a, a kind of a long journey ahead of us let me just do some little adjustments here uh, I wanna make sure this is a little bit more squared off uh, yeah, this should be a little bit lower here. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
Hey, thanks, Adam. Yeah, man. Super happy to see you here, buddy. Um, but let's see if you guys have any, any last minute questions because I'm, I'm about to call it a night. Uh, all right. Uh, do big studios like Santa Monica hire interns? People that are still learning college, something like Yeah, they do have an intern internship program. Uh, yeah, there you go. Like the dean is actually answering that correct. Uh, yeah, different studios have different policies and different programs. So uh, unfortunately, they usually don't only they, they they usually only apply if you are here in the U.S. or kind of close by to the studio uh, you're trying to work for. Uh, but I, I, I've met people kind of traveling around the U.S. just for the the couple months they get the the internship program for. So yeah, that that happens as well. So we hire small studios. The, the process is called outsourcing. So most big studios do work with smaller studios and uh, different vendors for different type of tasks. Um, and in fact, a bunch of, uh, I know, a, a f not, not a bunch, sorry. I know a few of uh, vendors actually located in Brazil, for example, they do uh, work with companies from the US and Europe. Uh, on big titles, uh, on, on on this format, right? So they get outsourced to uh, produce and resolve certain type of tasks, models, and and, and things like that. Um, that that's that's pretty much the standard. Like all of the triple A games, they they do some sort of outsourcing. If you look at the credits of a, a big title, you're gonna see like all of the the core team and then you're also going to see like a bunch of like different studios uh, i've noticed that the better a person gets in anatomy the model starts to feel more organic rather than accuracy can you mention some common mistakes that people start with anatomy so yes um the, the organic part comes from uh the subtleties and the, the subtlety comes from not being too literal, uh, meaning you don't need to draw every single line, you don't need to draw, cut every single muscle, which is something that you usually do on an accroche. Um, that also means that you are able to capture very subtle change of planes. Uh, and, and, and honestly, that comes with time. Uh, I don't have a, a proper answer for that. Uh, other than just kind of got to keep pushing, keep studying, Doing ecrochets is great because it really makes you focus on the inner anatomy, uh, but then trying to make things a little bit more organic. Imagine that there is a skin uh, on top of the surface of the muscles and the fat pads and, and, and all of that really makes things sink. But yeah, definitely the skeletal structure uh, i believe to be the most important one all of the muscles they they have insertions and origins in in the, in the in the bone structure right so without the bone structure the muscles they are just a pile of 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 muscles right so they are just they they, they don't have any form per se like so structure big shapes um uh, skeletal first in my opinion <laughs> oh man thanks everybody yeah i'm glad you guys uh enjoying it i'm having a blast too that's good that's great to hear it hopefully we're gonna do more of these Thank you for doing the stream, sharing your thought. Thank, thanks, guys. Uh, 
All right, guys, I'm going to call it a night again. I had a blast to thank thanks everybody for joining and tuning in today. Uh, and I'll keep you guys posted. We're going to probably do this more in the future. Uh, like I said, I don't. I'll do my best to schedule these uh, ahead of time so I can let you guys know via Instagram or Facebook. But most likely, I'm just going to be streaming whenever I feel like streaming, whenever I have time, whenever like uh, everything kind of all the stars in, in, in the sky aligns for me to do this. So we're going to keep working on this whenever we have the, the opportunity to do this next session. All right. So take it easy, everybody. Uh, see you guys. Bye bye.